coming up in this week's episode. This week, we are exploring the incredible history and natural beauty of the Tasman Peninsula with an easy road trip from Hobart to Port Arthur. Including the World Heritage listed Port Arthur Historic Site, McHenry Gin Distillery, Port Arthur Lavender Farm, the Pickers Pantry and Pear Shed Gallery, the Tasmanian Chocolate Foundry, some of Tassie's best fish and chips, stunning natural environments, a fantastic campground, and Pennicott Journeys Tasman Island Cruise, our favourite tour of all time. Remember to download our free road trip itinerary quick guide from our website and grab yourself a copy of our comprehensive ebook to unlock the secrets of the Tasman Peninsula. All right, grab yourself a drink. Let's do it. Yes, this is going to be an awesome week, Jasper Roo. We're on our way to the Tasman Peninsula. A couple of quick tips from us. Mm -hmm. Sorrel is about 26 kilometers outside of Hobart, and there is a Woolies there. It's a great place to stop. You can pull your rig over. There's also a Coles, and very easy to access and get your weekly shop done. Yeah, great tip. There are a couple of IGAs on the Tasman Peninsula, but good to stop at a major if you can and pick up what you need. Okay, the other tip would be to take advantage of some of the fresh produce that you'll see at the roadside stalls. Yes! The first guy that we got to meet was just on the outskirts of Sorrel. Check this out. All right, so I should try one first, you say? Yeah, absolutely. Okay then. Uh, well, how do you tell a, how do you tell a good one? They're all good. Try They're that, all good. Try, try that one. It's just. It's a good just, looking one. Just on the turn. Oh my god. This is fantastic. Yeah. This is local produce? Yep. Awesome. Are you the farmer? Yep. Wow, what's your name? Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. That's all right. All right, let's get some. How much will $10? <clears throat> It'll get you a kilo in a bit. Awesome. That one, put a few more in it. Wow. Oh my gosh, they are fantastic. They taste like apricots and everything, don't they? They actually taste like apricots, that's right. How I remember them as a kid. Yes. The ones that Grandma used to have. Yeah. No, we grind them out the back of Sorrel at Penna. Penna? Penna. How do you spell that? P double N A. Okay. Mm. Awesome. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Do I get paid for this? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I just paid you. How good is that? Oh my goodness. And getting to meet the farmer and learn where the produce comes from and the process, there is nothing better than that. Eat local, shop local. Fantastic. What gets, are we going to do with all of those apricots? Just keep putting them in the bag. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> if you've got a recipe for apricot jam or marmalade, you might have to let us, let know. us know. Okay, a little bit further down the track is the strawberry guy. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. And there is a much larger fruit barn as well if you want to pick up everything in one hit and you can pull your rig into there. 
Okay, our next stop is Donnelly, mm. and that is for the best fish and chips in Tassie. Yes. So we're told it's old school here. Okay, you literally walk in and the sign says, fresh fish caught by local fishermen. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You can't really find out what fish there is until you actually walk in the shop. So. Yeah, whatever they've caught for that day. That's what they've got. Right. Here we go, Jasper. Yeah. Old school in the newspaper. Oh. In vinegar it is. Mm. Salt and vinegar. Oh, yum. Should I try a chip? Yeah, you better check they're okay. Ooh. Good. Mm. Sounds nice and crunchy. That hot. Was very hot. <laughs> okay. <Nice. laughs> Such a gorgeous view. This really is the gateway to the Tasman Peninsula. Yeah. So you do have to drive through Denali. So definitely stop. Yeah, beautiful little village. Okay, and then it's not quite a 70 kilometers mm. down to Port Arthur. Mm -hmm. So we'll go get our fish and chips and we'll be on our way. Yes, down to the NRMA holiday park at Port Arthur, which is just gorgeous. Awesome a park. really great location too, to then get out and explore. Yes, okay, are you ready? Yep. Go, Jasper doing charades in the background. <laughs> our time here at the NRMA Port Arthur Holiday Park. It is set amongst this beautiful natural Aussie bushland, 40 acres, abundant with wildlife, mm -hmm. and it's in fact part of the World Heritage listed Port Arthur site. So quite a unique place to stay and you're close to all of the action. Oh, absolutely. And it does make the perfect base to get out and explore mm. everything that there is to offer on this beautiful Tasman Peninsula. Now they do have accommodation to suit everybody. They've got a range of cabins, including some waterfront cabins that look out over this spectacular bay. Mm. They have villas, bunk houses, some luxurious looking safari tents, as well as caravan and camping sites. What's great about the layout of the park is the tiered sites and the pull through caravan sites. So they're very generous and you don't feel like you are squeezed in or certainly not on top of your neighbor at all. The other thing that we really love is that you're able to have a fire here. Every single site has its own fire pit. Conveniently, you can pick your $20 crate of firewood up from reception. Reception actually houses a mini convenience store as well, which again is very convenient. Yeah, it is. And it's stocked with really great grocery items as well mm -hmm. as some sweet treats, some drinks, of course, and your camping essentials. And ice cream. And ice cream. Which we're going to enjoy around <laughs> the fire with some marshmallows a little later. Mm -hmm. For the kids, I think they've nailed it. It's really set up as a family friendly park there is an awesome newly installed pump track for your scooters and your bikes mm -hmm. there's another playground area and adjoining that are a number of outdoor but covered barbecue and kitchen facilities so that you can still enjoy being outside but in effect escape some of the cooler evenings that Tasmania is so well known for. Mm -hmm. Look, the facilities are fantastic. There is an excellent recreation area. The camp kitchen is fantastic. And of course, then you have your laundry facilities and amenities as well, as well as the ensuite sites for caravans. Now, this is a fantastic base if you are looking to do the Three Capes mm, Walk. Yes. That is epic. Uh, we've got a couple of years before Jasper, I think, is ready to do that as a family. Uh, but this would be a great base to drop your van or store your van or your camper and take off on that epic adventure. I mean, it's world renowned as one of the, the walks to do in your lifetime. 
if you're looking for something adventurous but maybe a little easier yeah, a little shorter <laughs> yes they do have a convict trail with five different points of interest and some great signed interp that you can read for the kids to learn some significant history about Australia's settlement. Yes, and you can walk up to Garden Point, which is lovely, and also down to Stewart's Bay, which is incredibly stunning, and a beautiful walk through the bush. Or if you are feeling up to it, you can take the 45 or so minute walk across to Port Arthur Historic Site. As a side note, however, if you do plan on visiting the site before you come and check in at the caravan park, there is ample parking for rigs of all shapes mm -hmm. and sizes, including motorhomes, caravans, camper trailers. You could also ride from here, which is pretty cool. And something unique that we haven't seen before is that they have a bike repair station with all the tools, everything that you would need to basically repair your bike if you had a puncture or you need to tighten up anything it's pretty cool that's it pump it up mate <laughs> how cool is that that's a first yeah everything you need to fix up your bike amazing i mean this location is absolutely incredible so getting out on your bike to explore the peninsula wow Yes, okay. If you are an NRMA member, make sure you mention that on check-in because you will receive a discount mm -hmm. as well, which is fantastic. All in all, we've loved it here. It's given us a great base to really get out and explore this spectacular Tasman Peninsula. And then to come back to this environment. It's just beautiful. It is beautiful. It is so quiet and the wildlife is incredible. It's a little bit chilly though, so I think we need to go and sit by the fire. I'm ready for a jacket <laughs> and marshmallow. <laughs> yes. Jasper! Hi! Hi! How good is this walk? Pretty good, right? It is so beautiful here. We're walking on nature path right now. Oh, that oh. looks like the beach. Come on, Dad. Watch, take your time. Yep. Is it slippery? Is that okay? Da 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 I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day I'm trying to make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors And I'll sing until my lungs give out Gonna let the sun shine in the day. Here we are at Port Arthur Historic Site. It is a World Heritage listed area and one of 11 convict sites here in Australia. Located on the Tasman Peninsula and an easy and incredibly beautiful scenic drive mm. one and a half hours from Hobart City. Mm. Look, I think we underestimated the size and scale of this property. It is 100 acres and just what is on offer here to experience. Look. It is more than just a prison, mm -hmm. a complete community that was home to military, civilian officers, of course their families and the convicts. More than 2,000 people lived here and over 12,500 convicts passed through the penal system during its 47 years of operation. Just incredible. 
Now your entry ticket gives you access for two consecutive days, which is just fantastic because you are going to want a really good amount of time to wander the grounds, the historic buildings, the ruins, restored house museums, and the spectacularly landscaped gardens. Now also included in your ticket price is a 40 minute introductory walking tour and a 20 minute boat cruise on the harbour with full commentary on the history of the port, the Isle of the Dead, the Cemetery Island and Point Pua, the boys prison that also formed part of the colony. Look, there really is some dark history here, but it is so intriguing. I think Port Arthur would have to be one of the oldest tourist attractions mm. in Australia. For over 150 years, the tour guides here have been sharing this very rich history of early Australian settlement. Mm. Now the penal settlement was established in 1830 as a timber getting camp using convict labour to produce the wood for government projects. From 1833, it was used as a punishment station for repeat offenders. The worst of the worst from all of the Australian colonies were bought here and many children as young as seven years old, which as a parent is just so hard to comprehend. Yeah, it truly is. Now, a really special service that they provide here are what they refer to as wombats. The special buggies that help guests get around because there are quite a lot of steep steps to navigate and in some areas this 100 acre property does have hills as well. Mm -hmm. So really wonderful and you can phone ahead to book these if you require extra assistance. However, much of the site is wheelchair and mobility device accessible, which is fantastic. Now we would highly recommend that you do book on to the extra tours that are on offer and there are plenty to choose from. Yes, including the Isle of the Dead and the Escape from Port Arthur tours that we did and we thoroughly enjoyed. Both tours give excellent insights into the history and the lives of some of the convicts and officials who lived, worked mm. and ultimately died here. And we do want to give a shout out to our incredibly informative, engaging and entertaining tour guide, mm. Carl. This guy is so passionate about the property and we just love that when we get to experience this because it truly is people like Carl that makes the experience so much better. Yeah. So if you are visiting, try and get on Carl's tour would be our <laughs> hot tip. Yes. Now the Isle of the Dead tour absolutely lives up to its name mm -hmm. with over 1,000 people buried on the island. From convicts, some as young as seven years old, to military officials and their family members. I thought this was an excellent tour add-on to get some really wonderful storytelling and really bring to life the history mm. of the people who died here. Yeah, it's really a great tour to get onto. The other one that we enjoyed was the Escape from Port Arthur mm. tour that shares some of the stories of the hundreds of attempts at escaping what would have been an absolute living hell. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately or fortunately, not many were very successful and the punishment certainly didn't fit the crime. In fact, it was severe, but didn't stop those repeated attempts. You can't imagine how bad the circumstances of their daily lives must have been to risk the punishment of being recaptured. 100 lashes across the back with the cat of nine tails. Mm, Terrible. It's, oh, it's such an unimaginable clash of that really dark history that is set within this incredibly beautiful and pristine environment. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly. Oh, and the darkness starts to fade. Feels like things are gonna go my way. I'm gonna let the sun.
sunshine in the day. I'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke. And I will try to fix what has been broken. And take this weight off my shoulders, cause I know yesterday ain't coming back. Sad words be spoken, and I'll let my mind be carried by the waves. As far as a family attraction, Jasper especially loved the cards that are given on arrival and the interactive experience of finding his character in the Port Arthur Gallery and then seeking out the stories of the convicts throughout the grounds. This makes it much more interactive and tangible, especially for the younger kids. Yeah, perfect. a moment of reflection in the memorial garden that pays tribute and remembers the 35 lives that were taken at Port Arthur in 1996. Now a very peaceful and private place for contemplation. Now before leaving, make sure you do stop in at the gift shop that stocks a beautiful range of local and Tasmanian products, bespoke gifts, books and other handcrafted goods. And with all that walking around, I mean, I think we walked around for about five hours. You are bound to get hungry. We certainly did. And there is a great choice of food and beverage outlets, including a licensed cafe with indoor and outdoor seating options. And if you are looking for something special to complement your experience here, book in for either breakfast, lunch or dinner at 1830 Restaurant and Bar. We're actually hoping to arrange some <laughs> sitters for Jasper so that we can spoil yeah. ourselves with a night out. The restaurant overlooks the entire property and at night I think would be a beautiful experience. Port Arthur is regarded as one of the most haunted places in Australia and after visiting and learning the history it is really easy to understand how that could be so. Now you can book into one of their very popular and not for the faint-hearted nightly ghost tours. They do recommend they are not suitable for very young children but perhaps better placed for the teenagers or bigger kids. Look, I've read a little bit about these reported sightings that happen mm -hmm. around this property and in particular on this tour. I don't think I'll sign up for this one, <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, you can understand why Port Arthur is one of the most popular attractions here in Australia. It not only provides a window to our past, but it is such a beautiful place for reflection, not only on where we've come from, but where our future may lead us.
Follow the yellow boat road. Pentecost wilderness wow. journey. Actually, yes. Wow is the word that sums up the entire experience that we have just enjoyed. That was incredible. Wow. Mm. If you, you know, when we came to Tasmania, Paul said, "I just, I want to see Tasmania." Yeah. And and that was, you this know, this is the way to do it. Yeah, and, and and from that, I meant, you know, the environment in in every aspect of it from the wildlife yeah. uh, the epic towering sea cliffs the tallest in Australia you're, you're in this boat you're looking up over 300 meters to these vertical cliffs mm -hmm. um, the color of the water the fact that we had a perfect sea uh, day you know as in there was one to two meter yeah. swell a soft swell uh, but these boats are made to go out in four or five meters oh, I mean God. aren't they incredible, incredible. The, the boats are amazing yeah. and powerful and where we were able to go into caves and you know through crevices and and places that Heart's, you wouldn't even dream of going heart-stopping adventure <laughs> stuff as well wasn't it yes Wow, so it's got a, it's got this perfect blend, you know. And then on top of that, you got these guys. We had Captain Ben, his first mate Luke, who nailed not only the the content as far as their knowledge, their passion yeah. about what they're talking about, but their care uh, towards everyone that was on board, and you know, making sure everyone is constantly comfortable um, in in what is quite an adventurous environment. Nailed it. Thank you, guys. It was amazing. I mean, yeah. and for Jasper. He was just like, he loved it. it Woohoo, baby! Yeah. So we got more of that than. Shouting and fist pumping, and, and it was just awesome. So, yeah. um, definitely one for all the family. It is. Look, it's number one, I think, as a, as a tourism attraction here in Tasmania. They've got five different cruises and a food, mm -hmm. seafood experience as well. It gives us a reason to want to do them all now after oh. doing one. Um, yes. You can see why they rated number one. This is a must do if you are coming to Tasmania, you're anywhere near Tasmania, <laughs> you're coming to Australia, come and do this tour. Yeah. Amazing. So fantastic and we actually filmed that on our last trip to Tasmania 
and across the two years that we've been touring as a family, it is still rated as our number one experience of yep. all time. As far as wildlife, the scenery, the experience, the attention to detail, the staff, mm -hmm. they just nail it. Yeah, they sure do. Yeah. And there are a handful of Pennycott journeys that you can do mm -hmm. here in Tassie. So our advice would be pick one and just experience yeah. this awesome tour with Pennycotts. It wouldn't matter which one it was or where you were, mm -hmm. definitely do one. Okay, next week, a little spoiler alert here, <laughs> we actually have a Pennycott tour known as Wine Glass Bay Cruise. Mm -hmm. Wow, you will absolutely love that. Yes, in that beautiful Freysenay National Park. Okay, now the scenery obviously here on the Tasman Peninsula, the wildlife, the landscape environment is pristine, mm. it is incredible. The thing that surprised us about the Tasman Peninsula is the foodie scene. Yes, and there's lots of great places to check out and indulge. Our favourite cafe on the peninsula is the Pickers Pantry Orchard Cafe, which is located beside the Pear Shed and Gallery over near White Beach. What's great is that the Pear Shed has fresh seasonal produce fridges, so you can pop down there pay your money via the honesty box or you can pay with FPOS when the gallery is open and pick yourself up some really beautiful mm. fresh produce and the gallery displays artworks and handmade products again by local Tasmanian artists and when we visited we found out that the gallery has actually been created by the community to support community artists. Now the Pickers Pantry Cafe is fairly new and it's a beautiful complement to what is already here and they serve up great coffees and teas, some delicious sweet treats and also freshly baked sourdough and it's set in and amongst the pear orchards so you can sit out in the beautiful lawn area the kids have heaps of room to mm. run and play they had a great selection of ride-on toys that Jasper absolutely loved and you can just take in this gorgeous environment that is literally across the road from the bay and make sure you grab yourself some ice cream. Mm, some of Tassie's best. So good. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> that is good. Now the Pear Shed is located just across the bay from a small seaside village called Nubina. Nubina hails from the local indigenous language group and means crayfish. So if you love your crayfish, this is the place to get them. There is a guy that sells local live crayfish about 500 metres further down the road from the pear shed. favourite place for lunch would have to be the Port Arthur Lavender Farm and they serve up delicious, very large meals from their waterside restaurant and again they showcase the best of Tassie's produce and fresh seafood. Now it's an easy 10 minute drive down the road from the NRMA in Port Arthur and our tip would be to give yourself a couple of hours to spend here to sit and relax mm -hmm. and have a delicious meal and then wander through the lavender fields. They have a great lake on site that is a photographer's dream. They also have a distillery that you can go in and learn all about how they distill this beautiful lavender oil and then of course browse through the showroom and the gift store that features all of their very unique and handmade lavender products including things like lavender whiskey, soaps, chocolates, you name it. There is such a great selection of lavender items for sale and strategically placed at kids eye level are uh, the lavender melting moments. <laughs> yes, they look amazing. <laughs> I think Jasper was the only one who got to try it. He devoured it. Boom, gone. <laughs> uh, the other thing is to actually take some time in the rows of lavender fields. It is such a beautiful location to just stop, 
check out the bumblebees that are pollinating, the rose of lavender, and as you mentioned, Katie, if you've got your camera on hand, you will pick up some beautiful shots. that the Tasman Peninsula is making quite a name for itself is in gin distilling. And there are quite a few to choose from. We were tipped off by the locals to check out a family owned and operated gin distillery called McHenry's. Yeah, so we really loved their family story mm. after reading online about them. The cellar door is open every day and you can visit and enjoy a tasting paddle a delicious cheese board, which is exactly what we did. You can even do a tour with them to learn more about the gin distilling process. And they also offer a gin distillers course at various times cool. throughout the year. So if you love your gin, definitely check that out. The paddle is a great option and accompanying cheese board. Mm. With the paddle, you can choose three gins from their entire range. I chose the butterfly gin, mm -hmm. Strong Navy and the Summer Gin, all with a splash of tonic. The Butterfly Gin is actually quite magical. Yes, where it changes, changes colour. colour. Uh, the Strong Navy was exactly that. Put some hair on your chest. <laughs> the Summer Gin would have to be my pick. Absolutely beautiful with that little bit of tonic in there. Interestingly, they are the only gin distillery here in Australia to produce a Federation gin that was commissioned by the government. Mm. In fact, you can only purchase this at Parliament House in Australia. What makes this so unique is that they chose a botanical from every state and territory to help make up this Federation gin. I think we'll be doing a detour via Canberra <laughs> on the way back through. Do yourself a favour and stop in to the Tasmanian Chocolate Foundry. Yummy. The shop is so beautifully presented. The chocolate is amazing. And what they do so well is make you feel like you really deserve <laughs> the chocolate. <laughs> hey Dad, have you ever seen chocolate soap? Are you serious? Smell. No. You can literally clean yourself with chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Make yourself look, smell so yummy. <laughs> Okay, before we wrap up with some more of the natural highlights that can be found here on the peninsula, make sure you visit the coal mines. Mm. This is another one of the 11 World Heritage listed convict sites found in Australia. The other on Tasman Peninsula being Port Arthur. This truly is an experience not to be missed. It is free entry. It is awesome to walk around the ruins in such a stunning location to read about the stories and the history and the hardships that were faced here by the convicts during settlement of Australia. There are so many natural beauty highlights on the Tasman Peninsula. For us, Remarkable Cave was a definite standout. And what was really cool was being able to experience it on the Pennicott's tour from water level, and then afterwards being able to drive and walk to view the cave from above. What's fantastic is, is that it is such a short and accessible walk mm. from the car park. There are much longer walks, as we mentioned. The three capes will be in a One future day. episode, <laughs> maybe in a few years. Yes. But make sure you check that out as well. 
We're now going to leave you with one of our natural highlights of the Tasman Peninsula, and that's the tessellated pavements. This is a geological wonder of the world. There are literally only a couple of places on earth that you can witness this natural formation. And following that, we will give you a sneak peek into next week's awesome episode as we start to make our way up the east coast of this incredible island state. For now, look after yourself, look after your family. And happy trails. next week on Family Travel Australia. watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family and happy trails. Taste test, what do you think? Yum. Yum? Uh-huh. Like as far as the rating from one to ten. Ten being the best, one being the worst. How does it rate? Ten. What? Like the best apple ever? Mm-hmm. Holy apples. Cool. It's time for you to repent your sins, Jasper. What do you mean? I've had a phone call. From Santa. He said, Jasper is on the naughty list. That is not true. Oh, sorry, no, that's not.